The YWCA, Fort Worth, and Tarrant County transforms the lives of women, children, and their families from poverty to independence through housing stability, affordable, high-quality child care, and financial self-sufficiency. If you live in the Tarrant County, Texas area and would like to contact us, please give us a call at 817-332-6191. And for free financial coaching, please email us at moneycoach at ywcafortworth.org. Welcome back. Our next section is going to focus on taxes and your finances. So let's go ahead and get started. As Americans, we know that we're subject to a lot of different taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, and so on. But the tax that we're most familiar with is our income taxes. So what we're going to do is focus on how your income taxes and your financial plan can be linked together. Most income taxes are actually withheld from your paycheck by your employer, and they pay these directly to the government for you. This makes sure that you don't owe any money to the government come April 15th, which is tax day. If you're self-employed, you are responsible for paying these taxes each year. So make sure that you're covering those taxes so you don't get into trouble with the IRS. Make sure that you file your taxes each year to ensure you aren't paying too much in taxes over the course of the year and letting the government keep more money than they should. Before going to the next slide, which is going to be an example of your W-4, I want to explain what it is. A W-4 is actually what determines how much money is withheld from your paycheck each time in order to go towards taxes. The key line that determines this amount is the number of allowances that you claim. The higher the number of allowances, the less taxes are taken out of your paycheck each period. However, this does not mean that you will owe any less money come tax day. It simply means that less is being taken out over the course of the year. Make sure that if you choose to use a high number of allowances, you put some aside in order to pay the taxes that you owe when it comes time for tax day. Typically, individuals will claim either a zero or a one on the total allowances line. This way, everyone knows that they will pay off all of the taxes that they owe to the government throughout the course of the year rather than owing a lump sum at the end. What you see on the screen now is an example of what a W-4 form might look like. This example is from 2009. You'll usually see a W-4 form when you begin your employment with an organization, but you can always go back each year and review it, and actually, that's pretty much recommended. Talk to the individuals in payroll or in human resources to access your W-4 information and see if your situation has changed. Make sure that you keep your W-4 information updated with your living situation. So we recommend that you review it at least once a year. At this time, I want to illustrate a couple of really key common tax credits that often get overlooked. The first one is the Earned Income Tax Credit, also known as EITC. This tax credit is for low to moderate income working families, and it can be claimed when you follow your taxes to help you maximize your return. It's kind of like a reward for maintaining employment throughout the year. Another common tax credit is the Child Tax Credit. This is a federal tax credit worth up to $1,000 for each qualifying child and they have to be under the age of 17. They're claimed on the worker's tax return and has lived with the worker for more than half of the year in the United States. And the best part about it is that you can claim both. Can you think of a better way to help maximize your return than finding out you're eligible for these two common tax credits? Make sure that you're taking advantage of them if you qualify. Another tax credit that you might want to look into is the Child Care Tax Credit, or CCTC. This tax credit goes towards help paying for child care for certain qualifying individuals that work. Check with your tax preparer or go to irs.gov to see for yourself if you might qualify for this type of common tax credit. So now that we've discussed different ways of maximizing your tax refund, let's talk about some ways that you can use that money in your financial plan. First, put at least some of that money away into savings. Don't have it all pre-spent on some big luxurious item. If you don't have any savings, maybe the best idea would to take $500 of that and put it towards this emergency savings plan. It's been proven that $500 in a savings account can help prevent the use of payday and title loans. In other words, it helps you avoid predatory debt. 
Also, you can use it to tackle any debt that you have right now, or use it to make your payments more manageable by paying off a significant part of the principal of the loan. Third, use a small portion of it as a boost to your income for that month, so maybe you can treat yourself to something a little bit nicer. You can also save by purchasing government savings bonds with your tax return. So that's a great option for you to have the type of savings that you won't be able to access for a certain period of time. If you're like most Americans, chances are you'll actually have somebody else preparing your taxes for you. In that case, let's go over a few key things to consider when choosing a tax preparer. First, don't go anywhere that promises the payment the same day. You will not get all the money that you deserve out of your tax return because they will charge you fees for that luxury. Second, make sure that the tax preparer has a PTIN number. In other words, the preparer of taxes identification number. Make sure that this number is written in ink on the tax return. This number will identify them as a certified tax preparer in case of an IRS audit. Make sure to get all fees charged in writing before you allow them to prepare your taxes. Just like credit, once you sign the dotted line, you're going to be legally obligated to pay them any fees that they're charging. Never leave any original documentation. Take the originals with you. Make sure that you know how to get a hold of them all year long. Don't go to a tax preparer that's only seasonal and you can't find later on. And then also get a copy of your completed tax return. It must be the signed form of this return, and you want to keep that copy for seven years minimum. Now that we've given you some information, let's give you a couple of helpful tools that you can use. Now if you live in the Tarrant County area, these will apply most directly to you. If you don't, I encourage you to look for other options that you might have for help in preparing your taxes. So for Tarrant County residents, you can check the irs to go mobile app for Apple and Android products. This will help give you a list of different resources and track your actual tax return. If you live in Tarrant County, you can also look into going to a VITA site. This stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. What this is, is it has certified individuals that do a free tax preparation service from reputable organizations. For more information on the location nearest you, you can contact your local United Way. If you choose to go on doing this yourself, you can also go to a free website developed by H&R Block. The free website is listed here as MyFreeTaxes.com. You can follow returns yourself, and it's similar to using software that actually you have to pay for. Lastly, if you choose to do it yourself, you can also go to IRS.gov. This will give you options for manual forms, information, and other resources. And I recommend that you go and do your research on irs.gov and get the information you need before filing your taxes. Go in knowledgeable, go in strong. To conclude our section on taxes, I want to review the key concepts. First and foremost, understand your W-4 and how it impacts your taxes. Know how to manipulate this item to suit your needs. Second, know the common tax credits and find out if you're eligible. The information can be found at the IRS website at irs.gov. I also want you to know the keys to picking a way to prepare your taxes. Understand your limitations and know how to pick a tax preparer that's safe and reputable. Lastly, understand how to make a plan for your tax return and know that sticking to it can help your finances for an entire year. Use this opportunity and your boost to income to really plan out how you want to succeed financially for the next annual cycle.